the instruction, the attention to detail that you provided with the design, the contractor was able to follow it. And then I was also able to follow everything as well in order to make the purchases. And then they were able to follow it. And then when they did have questions, you were always readily available to meet with us Mm -hmm. via Zoom. And then it was great when you you got the chance to come and actually uh, meet the guys as well. George the Tech. Hey, everybody. It's George the Tech. Well, we've come back for another client profile. We haven't done one in a while, and it's great to have with us today one of our clients from 2021. So we're going back a couple of years this time, and we're going to chat today with Cynthia Eaton. How are you doing, Cynthia? I'm great. How are you doing today, George? Doing pretty well. It's really nice to have you. So first of all, tell us where you are. All right. So I am actually inside my studio (laughs) designed by uh, George the Tech, but I live outside of Philadelphia near Westchester, Pennsylvania. That's where my studio is located. Which is obviously for me, for those that don't know, a wonderful coincidence because that is where my family lives in Westchester. So she's not far at all, which has been, which is great, right? Because Oftentimes when we design studios, it's rare that I get to physically see what's being built. And in this case, it was perfect. Tell me a little bit about um, voiceover for you. So when did you, what made you decide to make this big leap forward into building a custom booth? Because it's something that most people spend years thinking about doing. Well, I, my, my adventure into voiceover and audiobook narration, I would say started maybe three, four, Four years ago, seriously. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, was a a child actor. I'll put it that way. I was in a, okay. a theater yeah. repertory company. So I'm originally from Washington, D.C. And oh, nice. actually had done one voiceover gig, you know, as a, as a, as a, maybe a preteen, but spent a lot of years in theater. And so it's just really been a passion that I've had since childhood. Flash forward. 30 years later, after a wonderful career at a telecommunications company, and I retired. And right before I was about to retire, I was just, you know, trying to think through what's a good plan B, you know, what are some of the things that would really interest me, you know, as I kind of embark on this yeah. next next stage of life. So mm-hmm. I started taking voiceover lessons. Yeah. Found like a really good group in the in Wayne, Pennsylvania. Yeah, in, really? Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, in Wayne. What's the group called? Is there is there an organization that people can find online? So it was actually a theater group in Wayne. Yeah. And it was I started Googling and I just found literally on I think it might have been on Eventbrite, like just this random Mm. seminar about voiceover. And Mm -hmm. it was, well, they ended up referring me to Voicebox VO. That -hmm. was kind of Mm -hmm. my starting point with with Rob Mm -hmm. Holt. And so I went through his... They were like, oh, you have you have acting chops. Yeah, yeah, so... You're not a total, uh, you know, turnip that fell off the cart. Right, you, right. You, you've been around, you've done the acting thing. Yeah, yeah. It, so it was, you know, it was maybe a one-hour seminar. Mm-hmm. And so I then started taking some classes at Voicebox VO. They're a beginner, they're advanced, also their audiobook narration, which mm-hmm. is really kind of what got me into the more technical aspects of voiceover, yeah. which I actually found I really like a lot. <laughs> Good. And yeah. and then also I found voiceover meetup group that also met in the Westchester area. And I think that mm-hmm. is maybe where I became familiar with you. Yeah, through some of through some of that group. And yeah. so that kind of led me not only into voiceover, then people said, well, you know, it's really just acting. So maybe you should take some acting classes. <laughs> so then I went to Mike Lemon in King of Prussia and actually mm. got the chance to take acting for film and screen with Mike Lemon, who unfortunately is no longer with us. And that was really mm. awesome. And so I really have had the opportunity to to act 
to do voiceover and just I found some really wonderful organizations that are very supportive in this space. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So that's I love to hear all these I love to hear about all these neighborhoods and towns around where I grew up. Yep, you know, yep. it's very nostalgic. Yeah, it's very Yeah. That's wonderful. So your journey started really many years ago, mm -hmm. but it became a serious passion and now is are you spending every day pretty much of your working time focusing on this career? So not necessarily every day. Mm -hmm. And I do want to kind of revert back to kind of how I got to this point with the studio. So yeah. I had one of those temporary booths and actually mm -hmm. recorded an audiobook in it. It was located in the front of my house <laughs> where it was on the street. And so literally mm -hmm. every time a car went past or, I don't know, a cricket chirped, <laughs> I had to stop recording. And so it was You're just... You pausing all the time. I was yes. pausing all the time. I was recording at literally like 2 a.m. in order to be able to, you know, in, in order to be able to finish the project. <laughs> That's where those crickets come in. <laughs> That's where the crickets come in. <laughs> in the yeah. Morning, yeah. And so when I retired, one of the things I decided to do was to build myself a space where mm -hmm. I could, you know, literally if there's helicopters or people cutting grass outside, I have the opportunity mm -hmm. to work. And so I will say I'm not necessarily working every day, but I have had mm -hmm. quite a bit of work commercially. And also I do, That's great. yeah, I also do narrate for the Library of Congress. So I would say, oh, great. yeah, yeah, it's 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 awesome. Wow. It's it's a great experience. When I say, are you using it every day, working every day? I don't mean to say like, aren't you a full time career voice actor? <laughs> well, like you said, this is a sec this is really kind of a second or third career for you. You've you've retired from a career, so if you're not under the pressure that probably the pressure that you have to work every day. Right. I, I'm I'm not, but it's interesting that that you say that. I recently won the opportunity to to talk with a full time voiceover artist after mm -hmm. a session at the Audio Publishers Association. So I'm a member mm. of there, and I'm also a member yeah. of the Professional Audio Book Narrators Association (PANA) as wow. well. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's some wonderful organizations out there. Yeah. And so that actually was the gist of the conversation that that I had with the gentleman I was. Uh, I'm speaking with. And, yeah. you know, he's he's full time, but he's also in L.A. and he's a full time actor. And so mm -hmm. this is, you know, this is what he does full time. Just talking through, quite honestly, this being a hobbyist versus being a full time voice actor. And so some yeah. of the things I really am working on is actually doing a little bit more work. I, I love this mm -hmm. work. You know, I, I love the learning about the, the different genres and also having the opportunity to narrate in the different genres. I mean, who knew? Well, mm -hmm. I didn't. That there was like African-American speculative literary fiction. And... <laughs> I actually wow, it is, it's a very specific genre. It is but very is genre. very specific. And I get the chance to do that narration for the Library of Congress. So it's just it's very, very cool. cool. It's yeah, it's very cool. Yeah. 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 That's lovely. I mean, so you're finding out that in doing in doing this narration thing and having the studio and have you're like, wow, you know, I have the skills, I have the space. Yep. I have the quality. Yep. I have, and the time, and now you have the inclination yes. to want to do it more. Yeah. So you're just doing it more. So let's take a look at your studio. So obviously we're in it now. We're hearing it. It sounds great, yeah. as, as I would hope. Yeah. Um, but I happen to have the photo album of the photos that your your builder sent to me, which awesome. is awesome, yes. right? So yes. it's so great to have a photo library. So this is like this is what we would call here at least an ADU sort of thing, but. Maybe not. It's not really a dwelling. It's a room over garage. I heard somebody in North Carolina called it a frog. Fr Furni fr furnished room over, over garage. garage. It is a something frog. Something like that. Or so we actually finished out the room and the room in a room simultaneously. So, okay, got it. So, yeah. so literally the frog was built with the intention of building the studio inside of it. So mm -hmm. it serves mm -hmm. as like my office, my exercise space, as well as office space. 
as well. And it's also a great place to avoid family. It's just a little... <laughs> when you need to. Just a little retreat area, that's all. <laughs> exactly. Everybody needs that. Yes. It's very... That's how you have a long, healthy life. Yes. <laughs> by having your retreat space. <laughs> Tell me about how you found your builder, because finding the yes. builder is sometimes the absolute most important... Besides finding me. Yes. Finding the builder is definitely an extremely important. So how did you find your builder, and, and what was that process like? All right. So we used J&L Construction. And mm -hmm. truth be told, they are actually one of the uh, owners is my husband's barber. And oh, so, cool. yeah, yeah. So he, it's in, it's in the network. It as is they in say. the network. And so this is a business <laughs> that he has. In addition to being a barber, he also is an excellent, you know, architect and, con you know, works in construction and can oh, rehab right. just about anything and, and has mm -hmm. done that. And so, it was very interesting. They had never done, you know, a, st a studio before. So we all kind of stepped into it with faith. I tell everybody, <laughs> and I don't know if you remember this, but mm -hmm. I much prefer a, a conscientious, caring, communicative, conscious, the C three Cs, uh -huh. right? Yep. Conscientious, caring, communicative um, contractor, four Cs. Then someone who says, I've been doing these for years, I know what I'm doing, and they kind of just go off the script all the time because they're like, ah, I know I'd do a better way to do this. Yep. It's much better to have someone like your, that you found in your, your friend than, than the latter. So you started off on the right foot there. Well, that's, so, that's awesome. And so I yeah. also served as, I guess, for lack of a better word, I was the general contractor. So I right. took... You were the homeowner contractor. I was the homeowner right. contractor. So, you know, yes. I took your your sketches and your design and recommendations for vendors and reached out to the entire ecosystem to purchase everything from, mm -hmm. you know, the specific panels, the materials, the, materials, yeah. the ISO clips, the yeah. my soundboards that are all over the specific, mm -hmm. very special thing that's up there <laughs> on, on top. That was, yeah. I remember a whole different vendor. I think that keeps down that helicopter noise. But yeah. that was... How is that working out, by the way? It is excellent. It is excellent. Yeah. I, <laughs> I literally, great. like, unless, you know, there's like a lawnmower right outside the window. Like that droning sound, that mm, yeah, yeah, that, right. That that's hard to stop. That yeah, sound. it's hard to stop that. But other than that, I yeah. literally can work, you know, day or night, anytime I need to pop in here and Great. record. It is it is wonderful. It's wonderful. Well, I'm showing a picture of the of the booth when it was mostly framed out, mm -hmm. and then it shows some of those special clips, ISO clips with the metal rails, so everybody can see that those ISO clips look like. Yeah. So you so you did save yourself. I mean, I'm sure you don't, you probably don't know how much, but you saved yourself a fair amount of money self-contracting, buying the pro, buying all the product mm -hmm. directly yourself yep. and having it there for the builder. That was a smart move. And if you have the patience and the wherewithal to do that, you guys will, you will definitely save a lot of money. And if something happens with the contractor, let's say... You know, the worst case is the contractor turns out to m make some very big mistakes, be unreliable, not show up. You still have everything you need to build that studio and you can find somebody else. Right. So Definitely. I think it's a smart way to go. Yeah. Yeah, it was. And the 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 instruction, the attention to detail that you provided with the design, the contractor was able to follow it. And then I was also able to follow everything as well in order to make the purchases. And then they were able to follow it. And then when they did have questions, you were always readily available to meet with us mm -hmm. via Zoom. And then it was that's great when you, when you got yes. the chance to come and actually uh, meet the guys as well. Yeah, that's a big part of it. Yeah. Just there needs to be an, a, a way to c continue communication. Mm -hmm. If the contractor feels like, oh, I, I can't ever get a hold of that guy, or I don't, you know, it's like, I need to get this done, and I'm going to just get it done, you know, and then that, that's when mistakes happen. So it's great when we, we can keep that channel of communication open. Definitely. You know? Yep. And so now we're looking at the studio taking shape as the uh, the drywall goes up. So in terms of how long it took from start to finish, now I'm looking at the timeline of these photos. Mm -hmm. Some of them, the beginning is like end of November. Mm -hmm. And the very last photos are from the very beginning of January. So 
yeah. pretty fast, right? I mean, did it, to, to you, did it feel like it dragged on or did it feel pretty quick to you? It actually felt pretty pretty quick to me. Good. Yeah, just in terms of the, the build and even mm-hmm. the, the, the speed of delivery. Mm-hmm. you know, from from the vendors in mm-hmm. terms of delivery. And actually, one of the vendors was, I think, over in King of Prussia. I actually physically was able to go to their office oh, yeah. and meet with them um, and kind of talk through the list, the punch list, and then they, they delivered everything. Yeah. And you've got sliding glass patio doors. Yes, and I, I, do. I love recommending those because it's a two for one. You've got doors and you have windows. Yes. So... You don't have to have a whole separate window that you have to deal with and frame out. And sliding patio doors are extremely effective at stopping sound, especially when you go to the length that you did and you went with dual sliding patio doors, yes, right? Yes, yes. How, how often do you find yourself closing both? Because I would imagine you don't always need to close both of them or or do you always close them both by habit? What do, what do you do? So by habit, I generally do close both of them, but I have found sometimes I may just slide one and then I look out and I'm like, oh, I didn't close the other one, but I didn't actually really need to. Didn't even notice. Yep. Yeah, it's one of those things where <laughs> that second door is there for that last five to ten percent of the time mm-hmm. when you really need it, but you know, you know, a lot of the times that you may not, you know. Yep. So, yeah, it's a uh, now I'm showing it now with the pe- Pella uh, sliding patio doors up. Um, people can see the detail at the ceiling as well, showing showing how the roof of the booth has the walls on the sides look like they're attached to the ceiling, yep. but they're not. They right? are not. Everything is independent from the building, yep. except the bottom. Yep. Yep. the The entire yeah, room is yeah. It. It's is isolated with very you know there were very specific dimensions, you know regarding mm-hmm. you know where the the two by fours went and and all of that and the distance of each ISO clip as well and the contractors did a they did an excellent job with that. I yeah. don't know if we had pictures of the the airflow that you designed? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to show that. Okay. I, I'm showing right now the detail, the fact that the roof line in your room is not a flat roof. Okay. I don't know if you call it a barn roof or just it has that. Mm-hmm. It's got a slant on both sides, right? Yes. And then a flat top in the center. Yep. So the booth is designed to follow that roof line. Mm-hmm. So it's it's a little bit more complicated than a standard, just a cube. It's actually, the ceiling is actually raked a little bit. Yep. So that was an additional detail that the builder did. A really nice job with. Mm-hmm. So, moving forward, um, now we're seeing the room. And they're finishing the framing of the outside wall, outside of the doors. Now they're adding the drywall to the outside of the structure. And there's a shot I'm showing right now with only the interior door, and it shows how deep, how much space there is. Like a, the front wall where the doors are is a deep wall. Yeah, it's what it's got to be a foot deep, huh? Yep. Yep. It's a very, but that accommodates the double doors and gives you that extra level of isolation, yeah. right? Yep. So more details of the double doors, more details of the, uh, of now I'm starting to show a few of the drawings, the renderings. Okay. I should have had these first, but that's just the order they are on the album. Mm-hmm. So a few of the renderings that were drawn. Now these renderings are concentrating on the acoustic treatment. Mm-hmm. So before we jump to the ventilation, which is so important, The acoustical treatment. So did you end up doing essentially exactly what I had shown in the design? Essentially exactly what you designed because you are the expert. (laughs) It's, well, I mean, the proof is in the sound. We Mm -hmm. are hearing it as you hear it, and it sounds... It sounds excellent in yeah. there. It sounds really nice. Yeah. So I did do I did the panels, the corners, mm-hmm. the two corners, and then I guess there's a panel in the back, two on the mm-hmm. sides, and one in the front, two above. and then also mm-hmm. two that are suspended from above. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm showing right now a uh, ceiling view mm-hmm. uh, of like a plan view, but of the ceiling, and it shows exactly the layout that you're describing. Mm-hmm. And uh, and then. You've got the draperies over the door. Do you find yourself having to cover the doors? Do you or do you leave them open most of the time? So I actually do keep the draperies. I keep them closed mm-hmm. just to eliminate any of the you know the kickback from the glass itself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you you notice the difference when you're sitting and recording. You'll 
if they're open, you'll go, oh, I can hear a little. Do, I can, you, do you notice the reflection? So I can hear just a little bit, just a little bit yeah. of the reflection, but it's mm-hmm. if if they are not closed. Now, the only thing I didn't, mm-hmm. you did recommend theater draperies, and I may, mm-hmm. I don't know, treat myself to that one day. You're just using like a nice, uh, like a bedroom drapery or something. Yeah, like I've that. got double layers yeah. of bedroom. Mm-hmm. I just did two two layers this they one. do the job yeah and this yeah they one. do the job yeah yep. <laughs> the key thing is that the drapery closest to your mic needs to is the ideal thing is that the glass closest to the mic is covered mm-hmm. honestly the rest don't make nearly as much of a difference okay. you know you can probably leave the majority of it open hmm. so now we're looking at the uh, room and it's essentially finished and we're looking at a shot of the floor showing the flooring in there yep. you put in flooring that matches the yeah. the rest of the the uh, the building right yep, yeah yep, so it, it looks yeah. it looks all congruent it looks like it was always there it looks like it was designed to be there yep it's it's just that's what's so great about this this design it just looks like it you have base molding trim everything matches and it looks like it goes together it's really really nice yep so then as the last few shots is some sketches of the ventilation and I don't think I have any photos of how it actually looked when it was done but. How's the ventilation working out? Because this is one of those things that's really critical and hard to get right. Yeah, they did an excellent job. I believe there's like antimicrobial content and it's like a winding yes. box that, that you designed. Yes. And there's one box on the front of the studio. Well, I'm just pointing this way, this side. Yeah, and then so there's a box. You have your windows are in the side. middle. Yes. On, and so on one side of the window, is on, on the right side, there's one. And on the other side is the return, you would call it, yes. where the air comes back out. Yep. Yep. And then we have the fan that keeps the air circulating. Did I, you find you had to play around with it much to get it quiet? Or how did that work out? Did you find a speed that you had to set I, on the I fan? I want to say I keep it on three and I hardly mm-hmm. ever adjust it. I hardly ever adjust it. And then we did also do, we did install your recommended, the unit, the air conditioning heating unit. Yes. I, in fact, there's a great shot. There's a few that show that on the wall, mm-hmm. the, the mini, split mini split ductless unit, which is, a, which is the last, that's the, ah, the chef's kiss, right? Yes. It keeps that whole area constant temperature and comfortable no matter what, right? Yep. It sure does. It sure does. Yeah. It's great. Well, I got to say, I, it looks beautiful. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounds like to me that because you have it, now you feel much more emboldened to do more work and really take it like a career more seriously. I, I definitely do. You know, no one questions, mm-hmm. you know, once they either hear a recording of a demo or just samples that I have, they're like, OK, your sound is is spot on. You know, I never. I don't have that. They don't have to ever it. worry mm-hmm. about that. Nope. Nope. Second guessing. Nope. They know you're a pro. Um, and that's just confidence inspiring not only for the client, which is obviously very important, mm-hmm. but for you so that you want to do more. Exactly. So I can't think of a better ending to that story. Yeah. Yeah. Or the beginning to your new career as a, as an audiobook narrator. Yes. Yes. <laughs> as it were. Yep. It's awesome. <laughs> well, it's wonderful. It's so nice to see it. It's great to see you again. I'm really happy to hear how it's turning out. Before we wrap it up, because I don't have detail shots, just tell everybody what you're using. What do you like to record with? What What's your mic, your sure, interface, sure. and the software you like to use? All right. So I use Studio One as my DAW, and I mm-hmm. also use Isotope RX to do just a mm-hmm. little bit of tweaking. But quite mm-hmm. honestly, I rarely need much, and I record on an AT4040. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's a great mic. That mic looks a lot like... This one right here, ah. I think. It's not the same. This is a 3035. Okay. It's sort of mm-hmm. the it's like the little brother <laughs> or cousin to your mic, but that's a that's an excellent microphone. And then uh, did you say it's a Scarlet or what's the interface that you're using? To I'm actually with? using the Studio One interface. Oh, it's the Personas model. Mm-hmm. Personas, I can't remember the model. It could be an audio box or yeah, it's, something I, like yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It sounds great. It sounds clean. And obviously you're booking yep. and um, it's doing what it needs to do. So anyway, thanks. I really appreciate your time. We've had a nice long conversation, which is wonderful. I got to get to my next appointment All and right. I'm sure you do. So yeah. I appreciate you All right. and uh, congratulations. Thank you. Hope to see you next time you're in town. Thanks.